John's Gospel, chapter 12. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Verse 25. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And six, whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, even it also will be, my Father will honor the one who serves me. Now, as you have noted, verse 23 starts with Jesus replied. Jesus replied to whom? What is happening here in chapter 12? In chapter 12, verse 13, you see large group of people coming. They looks like he is confused. He is going to Andrew. He is saying, hey, these people are saying they want to see Jesus. What shall we do? It seems they are confused. Both of them are confused because in John's gospel so far, only in one instance you see Jesus with a Samaritan woman. Every time Jesus is with Jewish people. They are confused. Would Jesus say, yeah, Greek people, come, I have time for you. Or Jesus would turn back and say, Andrew, Philip, don't you know why I came? I came for the lost sheep of Israel. I came for believers. They are perplexed. Both of them, Philip and Andrew, most probably Greek people connected with them because both these names are Greek names. They went together to Jesus. Jesus, they are waiting. Would you give them an appointment? And verse 23 says, Jesus replied. What would you expect in Jesus' reply? The understanding that we have about Jesus is, Jesus would be saying, Andrew, Philip, get them in, get them, get them in as fast as you can. But I see a very surprising response. In verse 23, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Unless a kernel of wheat dies, it remains. What is the connection of this with Greek people seeing Jesus? Have you thought about it? I have struggled with this. Now I want you to know, my dear people of God who have gathered here, as somebody put it, the gravest sin of this generation is preaching to the preached, feeding the fed, watering the saturated soil. Most of the activities that we do in our church on a regular basis is for the people who are part of the church. Our Bible studies, our conventions, or an evening like this, it's all targeted towards the people who are already followers of Jesus. But here are Greek people waiting outside. I want you to know, the neighbor which is staying next door, the student who is sitting the next, alongside with you in the same bench, they are the Gentiles, Greek people. They have not told you they want to see Jesus. But in every people's heart, there is a question. What are these people doing in the church? What kind of a person is Jesus? Is Jesus like any other gods in India? Or is Jesus somebody unique? They have a question. But I want you to know this lesson, the response of Jesus. If ever... This Greek people has to come to me. There has to be something that should happen before that. If ever we want our unbelieving friends to come to our church, Jesus' principle is timeless. This is a principle that William Carey followed. What is the principle? In verse 25, anyone who loves their life will lose it. Anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. In the previous verse, you are like a grain of wheat. You must die. My dear PYPA believers, my dear Sunday school children, teachers, parents, all of you, let me put before you the first principle that I learned from Jesus' teaching and from William Carey's life. It is nothing but... Mission requires a very costly sacrifice. Look at the words here. Unless you hate your life, unless you are willing to die, 
Now the popular companies would tell you, we will help you accomplish your dream. But Jesus is telling us, you must die to your dreams. You must hate your one and only life. Now you will be sitting here and wondering, how does that look like? If I were to hate my life, does that mean that I can go around and eat whatever is there in the restaurants, not taking care of my body? Is that the meeting of hate? No, it's not the meeting of hate. Hate means you give priority to the will of God in your life. More than what your parents think about your future. They might want you to see you as an engineer. Or they might want you, your life to be so secure, to own two houses in Bangalore. Settle down. Unless you hate your life. Unless you are willing to die to your own dreams and ambition. You will remain like this. You will not impact anybody. That is what Jesus said. If you're willing to die like William Carey, who died to his dream of living in England, came to India, he died to himself. He was like a kernel of wheat, full of life. He was thrown into the Indian soil and here is that seed bursting out and sprout coming and we see the evangelization happening in India. The question is very simple today. Where are the William Careys of our day? Who is the seed? You are the seed. PYPA people, you are the seed which lot of life inside. If you go to a secular company and work, you are full of life. You can accomplish great things. But the challenge this morning is, God is recruiting an army. Would you surrender your seed, your only life? Would you commit and say, I am willing to fall down in the Indian soil. May God's kingdom be glorified. When I was preparing this sermon, I was thinking of my own life. Around 13 years back, when a challenge like this was given, I went to the front and said, Lord, I am willing to die like a grain of wheat. The second timeless truth that I see from the life of William Carey and from this passage is this. You need to be consistent in your obedience. Mission work doesn't only require costly sacrifice. It demands a consistent obedience. One bit of it was portrayed in the skit. Let me repeat that. In the 1700s, the Baptist leaders were sitting together in their council. And here is a young, energetic, ordained man. A new ordained man. You cannot see that most of the time with elderly people who are ordained for 30 years, let's say. Here is a newly ordained man. He is arguing with the other seniors. What is the issue? Issue is overseas missions and as the skit portrayed everybody said we are not going to send it you we are not going to send you to india but he was arguing here it starts a consistent obedience the first step itself there is hindrance i want you to know pypa people i want you to know sunday school people god wants you to have creative vision we cannot reach the world with old traditional patterns. We need creative vision provided it has to be scriptural. There will be people who say, like they told William Carey, you know what they told? Young man, sit down. I can assure you, I can guarantee you, if you dedicate your life today, this evening, I want to be like this great man, William Carey. You will hear for sure, maybe tonight itself, young man, sit down. But I have learned over the years, God can accomplish great things through people who heard, young man, sit down. If you are a person who have heard in your life, young man, sit down. In God's own timing, God can raise you up as a missionary in India. God can give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God can give you command over evil spirits. It's all the matter of your consistent obedience. Most of us have seasonal obedience. But what God requires is a seasoned obedience, not seasonal obedience. When he came to India, you know what happened in the script they have portrayed. His own wife had gone mad. 
he had to bury his own child but a principle consistent obedience day one itself there was trouble consistently moving ahead consistently moving ahead i can think of only one person whom william carey is imitating william carey is imitating none other than jesus himself from day one he had to fight the battles people looked at jesus and said he is a madman some people looked at jesus and say he is possessed with demons some people look at jesus and say he is a samaritan but consistently obeying in john's gospel chapter 12 verse 28 interesting word jesus is saying father glorify me you know what is the response to that then a voice came from heaven i have glorified it and will glorify it again my question is that voice from heaven i have glorified it when did you glorify it the answer is very simple from day one with the consistent obedience jesus was bringing glory to god not only on the cross on that big stage god is inviting all of us today for a consistent obedience on a daily basis the third principle that i see here we need to have costly sacrifice we must have consistent obedience and we should only look for the rich reward which is waiting on the other side look at verse 26 12 26 whoever serves me must follow me and where i am my servants also will be if you have studied john's gospel at least once you would know in chapter 7 and verse 34 jesus said to teachers of the law and pharisees jesus said you cannot come where i am going you cannot come but in chapter 12 jesus said where i am my servant will come what is the greatest reward for a servant of god i believe the day and age which we are living in we have domesticated the message of the cross church has become in most places a place for entertainment and fun as in second timothy 3 1 it was warned mark there will be terrible times people will be lovers of themselves we are in a day and age like that preachers are catering to the itching ears paul warned it earlier there will be another gospel preached there will be another jesus preached what is the reward awaiting for us if we are consistently obeying i have heard people saying when i started to serve the lord i had only a bicycle but now by god's grace i drive an innova thankfully nobody said hallelujah <laughs> is that the reward that you will get to follow jesus for a man like william carey who came to india who was like a grain of wheat willing to fall on the ground what is the reward we are talking about is it the reward serampur university what is the reward i can see one reward here where i am my servant also will be seated my dear people of god especially those who are in ministry don't ever be content by any stages any amount of money you might get in ministry there is a future day coming when jesus will come back and we will be seated with him there we can see william carey there is an interesting story about an african couple who spent several years in africa american couple who went to africa as missionaries i'm sorry after spending several years the journalists have written like this they lost their health they lost their money they lost everything they decided to go back to america after several years in africa and like a coincidence in that ship the president of america was traveling teddy roosevelt the american president was there in the ship this missionary couple realized president is there there are a lot of people around the president when the ship voyage was on the husband was looking at the wife and said honey you look very tired several years back when we were young and energetic we went to africa now you look very tired when they were about to reach new york 
the journalist writes like this there are several hundreds of people waiting to receive president roosevelt there are people with camera there are people with pen paper for the next newspaper this old missionary couple the husband looks at wife and said honey this is not fair this is not fair what did we accomplish in our life we have gone to africa this is not fair there is nobody to receive us in new york there is nobody to click our pictures this is not fair god is not fair the story goes like this the real story they head home somebody had prepared a home for them in that house again this man was full of remorse anger he looks at his wife and say this is not fair we spent several years in africa is this a reward god has given us we lost our health we lost everything do you know that wife was a woman according to proverbs she told her husband just go to the room you tell your god your emotions you tell god god you are not fair you tell him and you come back she started making tea and the husband has gone inside in the room after few seconds the husband is coming back and the lady wife looks at him you got the answer yes i got the answer what is the answer the moment i knelt down i could hear a voice you are not yet home you have not reached your home my dear people of god you might be living in a good house you might be driving a good car i'm not against any of those things but don't ever domesticate jesus as blessing for that william carey jesus the text is suggesting something else wait for the day when god will really lift us up and when we will seated with him unless a kernel of wheat falls and dies it remains we are all remaining securing our life what will happen to me if i am gone from this world let my children get some benefits so i take this insurance policy i am securing my life what happens when my children grow up i am securing their life have you secured your life that is yet to come are you like a grain of wheat who is remaining or are you like william carey grain of wheat who is willing to be thrown down and let harvest come let millions of people in india come to know the saving knowledge of christ through our life especially members of pypa and sunday school this is a challenge for us this is a great evening i agree i commend you for that but this evening is incomplete without rededicating our lives to be grain of wheat to be fallen on the ground so that the master can make beautiful vessels out of us so that there'll be a great harvest in and around bangalore in the indian pentecostal churches may god bless you all with these verses have a great evening ahead